visage. Uh, this is a half an hour presentation on AutoCAD 2011, a 3D overview of the functionality. Um, AutoCAD, um, I must admit the latest release, uh, I tend to skip a few releases in my head um, because we, we support other software. 2011 came along and I had a look at the 3D functionality in 2011 and it amazed me with what uh, Autodesk have actually put in there recently. So what I wanted to share with you was um, just some, a few example drawings and models uh, of what can actually be done in the latest version of AutoCAD. Uh, this, is, this is the full AutoCAD, by the way, not AutoCAD LT. So all the 2011-based AutoCADs um, can uh, have this functionality, and I wanted to share this with you. So it's short uh, PowerPoint. I just want to go straight into the software, and we'll have a look at AutoCAD itself. First things first, um, a lot of users do tend to change the interface from the ribbon interface to the old pull-down menu. I used to do it on a regular basis with AutoCAD. I've come to um, work in certainly with 3D in AutoCAD. I have come to get used to the ribbon uh, that we have along the top here. Um, this enables me to change the uh, workspace to whatever workspace I require, um, whether I'm 2D drafting or 3D modeling. Everything's there in front of you. Um, we've been used to this in Inventor for quite a while and um, have come to uh, get now to join me. Work it with it very well. So um, the, uh, the ribbon is worth working with in AutoCAD. Uh, one tip I can give you with uh, running with AutoCAD is the fact that the icons, uh, the, 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 um, the buttons down the bottom of the screen here are icons when you initially install AutoCAD. It's worth just right-clicking and untick Use Icons because uh, I just can never remember what all the icons are, so I just change it to text at the bottom. Anyway, let's move on to the 3D um, part of this webinar. So I've just got three 3D um, items on the AutoCAD screen in front of me here. And initially in AutoCAD, when it was written many, many years ago, all you could really do was sort of 3D wireframe, which is what we've got represented on the left-hand side here. They then come up, came up with meshing, which um, we still use uh, to a certain point, which I'll be explaining later. And then the surfaces came in, the NURB surfaces came in uh, a few releases ago. And, of course, we now have the solid uh, modeling capabilities as well. Um, it's worth using the, uh, the cube, the view cube on the top right-hand side. This can be switched on from the uh, right here. It can all be also be switched on from the, from the view ribbon. Um, this enables us to change um, orientation quickly, either by just uh, dragging on the cube, um, dragging on the compass, clicking on the home view, um, also changing from, uh, if I right click on this perspective, or to parallel um, uh, view. Uh, we also have what's quite useful is actually a little pull down at the bottom which shows you the current UCS you're in and also enables you to select other UCSs that you wish to work with. So this is uh, what we've got in uh, what we can actually model in uh, AutoCAD. I'm just going to now open up another drawing and we'll have a look at uh, how we work with UCSs in, uh, in AutoCAD. Now, if you used AutoCAD from many, many releases ago, we used to type in UCS, we used to use three point and origin commands and so on. Um, and okay, it was, it was fine, but they, they've come a long way with uh, the ability now of uh, changing uh, UCSs, uh, certainly when you're working on a solid model or a 3D model. Uh, if I enable the uh, dynamic UCS button at the bottom of the screen, then uh, when I come to draw anything on my uh, model, the dynamic UCS automatically recognizes that I'm about to draw on this particular face. Um, and then sets the UCS up temporarily for me such that um, the, the, the geometry I've just drawn is orientated on the correct face. So the UCS changes to that um, face temporarily and then goes back to whatever UCS you were using in the last, which in my case is the world UCS. So if I just press and pull that just to make an indentation in the model, so um, the dynamic UCS is extremely useful. We've still got all the old commands, i.e. I can change the origin uh, point. Let me just put my O-snap on. Um, and take dynamic UCS off. Uh, 
and again we can draw as we would normally press and pull take my geometry and cut that in so the dynamic UCS um, extremely useful it enables you to uh, automatically um, select uh, a face as you draw and draws on the correct face without you having to change the UCS at all which in some instances is quite awkward to do um, the, the AutoCAD software with the dynamic UCS picks up that face automatically okay so let's work on uh, have a look at um, a drawing that uh, we have here that was created um, using the polylines uh, with a width uh, so I've got a planned view of a building here and what I want to do in this case is to convert this to 3D um, notice it is important to notice that the polylines do have a width so if I just turn off uh, if I go into the inner wall layer and turn off the other layers a second okay and let's have a look at this geometry so I'm just going to window around the polylines and change their properties um, you all may be aware of the thickness property that we can add to geometry this is a very very old option to geometry in AutoCAD and it gives geometry a height so it makes it look 3D uh, so what I'm going to do here is add a height to these walls okay but if I go to the properties of these walls it's just a polyline still it's just it's got a thickness so it's still not 3D uh, in the way we would probably want to use it i.e. making it into surfaces or solids but it, it actually gives it a, the, the polyline a thickness which makes it uh, look pseudo 3D in this case what I want to do is convert it to one of the uh, three 3D models I showed you at the beginning so I'm just going to go to the solid editing here and convert this to a surface so we just select the polylines we've now got surface models here we can do with this what we will we may want to add particular finishes to this we may want to uh, um, pull the surfaces about and so on so this has converted the polylines with the thickness to the surfaces we uh, now go to our outer walls okay and take these and again go to their properties this time, time I'll change the height to 100 wherever the units are in this case our outer walls have a height, a thickness again, again pseudo 3D but in this case I'm going to go to solid editing and change this to a solid model instead so I'm able to, to take these polylines and convert these to a solid model again if we go to the properties of this it shows me that this is a 3D solid um, useful if you wanted to um, perhaps uh, cut out apertures for doors, windows and so on uh, and in this case all I need to do is if I've got my dynamic UCS on is go to my geometry, draw my shape, go to press pull, pull it in, cut it out likewise again if I've perhaps got a door let me just put the uh, O snap on to press pull, set the geometry, push it in, there we are so we're working with a solid model here and this was very easily converted from a polyline that was initially drawn with a width um, and then given thickness and converted to a solid afterwards so that's um, working with uh, basic geometry in AutoCAD that you may have started off in 2D and you want to convert to 3D okay now I did at the beginning talk about uh, mesh and uh, if we have a look at uh, have a look here yeah I've got a simple box that's been created using the mesh command in AutoCAD um, if you want to know how to mesh this sort of thing then it, you in the mesh ribbon you've got all the primitives that we can create this was a mesh box that was created and you can see up here the ribbons show what style of or what type of 3D feature you can create or object you can create so we got the mesh ribbon for creating meshes we have the surface ribbon for creating nerve surfaces we've got the solid ribbon for creating solids and working with solids and the home ribbon gives us a mixture of all three uh, of the popular uh, commands 
So what we're going to do in here is use some of the new um, filters within AutoCAD. We're going to use what's called a gizmo in AutoCAD. And uh, just to show you how we can take this mesh box and convert it to, as near as I can, a mouse, as in the mouse on a PC. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just change my filter to uh, select edges. And I'm just going to select some edges on my mesh. You notice I've got the move gizmo highlighted as well. And now I can just use the move gizmo to move these edges up on my model. Okay, now that I've created that, I can go to mesh and smooth it. To smooth the mesh, the box that I created earlier to give it a more rounded shape. Okay, so now I want to do the little crease or the, the indentation for the wheel or to show where the wheel will be. So again, we just go to the filter, select edges. With the move gizmo highlighted again or switched on, I can now select the z-axis and pull to the shape I require. Okay, now this the next one's a little bit more trickier. What I want to do in this case is to uh, move um, the two side uh, faces out slightly at the same time. So I'm going to use the scale gizmo in this case to scale the edges. And with the edge selection on, I'm going to select two edges either side of my mesh. But to get this to scale correctly, I need to reposition the origin of my scale gizmo because if I scale it now, it will scale it in relationship to the origin that you see on the draw on the model here. So if I right click on the gizmo and relocate it, if I just use shift right mouse button to get my quick snaps, I want a midpoint between two points, which is useful in this case, and just pick two points on my model. And that will reposition, not quite, let's do that again. One point there, another point on the other side. Get a bit closer. There we go. And now I can reposition or scale my mesh um, either side using the scale gizmo and it scales it um, symmetrical about the width of the mouse. Okay, so that's that changed. Um, problem is I'm on a flat base on this. Uh, as you can see, it's curved. So what I can do with the mesh is change my filter to select faces. I don't want to gizmo in this case. And I'm going to use what they call a crease command to crease the underside. So I've got a flat face on the underside of my mouse. So that was starting off with a rectangular shape. And if people say to you, well, you can't in uh, any of the Autodesk software, You can't um, uh, work with uh, surfaces and push and pull surfaces. Well, yes, you can because you can do all this inside of AutoCAD. And of course, this is a mesh. So what we want to do with this mesh now is um, convert it to a solid. So what we've got to go in here is to uh, convert it to a solid. Use the convert to solid command. Select the uh, mesh. And that now converts it to a solid model that we can... Uh, use one of the export commands in AutoCAD with a step or ASIS and push this into something like Inventor to do further modeling with. Okay, so that was Mesh. Let's have a look at something simple uh, within another drawing. Um, just uh, um, this uh, 